Okay, what's up, y'all? How you doing? I'm JS Method, or you guys may know me as Coach JS. I'm a full-time coach, and I'm also one of the better Trindomir mid players and any players in NA. And today I'm doing a little bit of a review of one of my own games, Trindomir vs. Victor. Now, this is kind of like a very good example of what should happen. Um, this is in a Masters game. It's against Victor, which is a very good matchup for Trindomir, and I'm going to talk about why and what happened. And I think this game is also very good in terms of rotations and lane assignments and lane phase. So I think this is a, just a very kind of like perfect game to show you how, like what Trindomir can do when he's executed well. So this game, we're playing against Victor. Now, it's always important to know what Victor takes, especially since, you know, usually this is a favorable trend matchup, but... To know that he has Ghost and he has Phase Rush, Phase Rush, we have to know that that kind of takes away a lot of our all-in opportunities. So we're looking to play a little bit more pokey. He's not going to be able to harass us as much, but that means we can also take shorter trades and be okay. So we're looking for a lot more E-Poke in this matchup than if he took something like Aerie and Scorch. Um, so I'm just taking a look at this. All right, let's hop right back, hop right into lane phase. Get right into it. I'm coming here to get some rage just to set up a little bit of an all-in. We're looking for E-Trade kind of right away. And here, one of the most efficient ways that you can kind of trade with Trend, uh, Trend to be your mid, is getting a last hit with your E and spinning onto them at the same time. So you can see when the spinning gets low, I get ready to kind of just... I line up in a way where I can E to hit the minion and hit them. And then I don't really want to run this down because I want these minions and I'm taking minion damage. So I just walk away. Take that small little trade. Perfect. Again, we're pretty happy with that. Especially because we have so much sustain and he went just D-ring. Like taking small trades like this that are even are so fun. Okay, two crits like that in a row. Super lucky. But also if you know you're going to take a crit, uh, take a trade, it's really good to have lots of rage. So when you crit like this, a higher chance that you crit like this. Like, look at that. Absolutely disgusting. So now lane feels pretty good. Um, we're going to try to crash this wave and try to force him to back here. Like, he pretty much just has to back. Oh, uh, this is kind of awkward how, like, half of it crashed, but some of it didn't. After you crash the second wave, super good time to get a ward down. Super common that you get ganked around this time. I decided to just go check and then decide I'm not going to place my ward because I'm going to play, I'm going to try to freeze. Because what freezing does on Trindomir is it extends the lane so it's a lot easier so you can all in. So, we see me just chilling here. Again, I'm just trying to freeze. I kind of messed it up because I eat through half the wave. So, in my head, I'm just like, alright. If he tries to get this minion, I'll try to spin onto him. I do get my ward down now because I didn't get the freeze like I wanted to. I wanted to freeze, so I was trying to hold my ward, but if you're ever pushing out, like this is a big like red flag to any jungler. Any jungler is going to look to gank you when you have this slow push. Because they're like, oh, it's super easy. He's going to be overextended, especially as Trindomir, where like our trade patterns are so aggressive. Or if we E forward, we're just super susceptible to getting ganked. Here, this is why Trindomir is so strong. He's permanently hitting us, and we just, we don't even notice it. We're so incredibly strong here. Okay, we see their jungler. Perfect. Our junglers are just trading sides of the map here. Perfectly okay with me. We should, we ping this a little bit to tell her that, that uh, Hecarim was there. We should ping danger to her. Because it's very common Hecarim's going to stay up on this top side. Again, now I'm trying to do this freeze so that if he backs, he has a really bad wave state and we're just super far ahead. If he doesn't back, we get a really nice lane to all in him on. And of course, the Hecarim is top. I think right here I'm kicking myself for not pinging it because it's like, of course he ganked there. We saw him here and he got this crab. Okay, so usually in this situation, I would flash on top of him, but he has ghost and flash and just proc phase rush. So he's super hard to run down. So I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I'll just take the good wave state. Um, but he actually stays here, which is so incredibly illegal that he stays here. So 
So I'm just thinking, whatever. If he's actually going to stay, Kane, come kill him. We'll just tower dive him once we crash this giant wave. Super illegal what he's doing right now. Because we just land a W. Okay, missing the W sucks because now we can't just walk onto him. If we land W, we get to walk onto him and yet he has to flash away. And then we get to respond with our flash. But fortunately, the cane bails us out. Backroom comes through. I have like full rage here and I'm stacking lethal tempo. So I feel like we can win this, but he is tanky. So whatever. I'm like, okay, I'll just take my medicine. I'll go back. Um, Here, I know I want to go Blade of the Ruined King because I think Blade of the Ruined King is just so good this patch. I've been going at first no matter what. I haven't decided what components I like. Mid lane, I like Vamp Scepter a lot because what Vamp Scepter allows you to do is just sit on the wave and push it and they can't stop you at all. So you get to just kind of create tempo whenever you want it. It definitely lowers how good your all in is. Um, if you want a good all in, you definitely go like pickaxe for the AD. But I'm thinking I want the sustain so I can control the wave and I can use my HP more aggressively. So that's what I take. And here we have a pretty nice freeze. So I'm thinking we'll kind of play passive for a little bit. Try to get the wave, try to extend the lane, get the wave closer to me so I can all in him again. So usually against Victor, since he has his lasers, you want to kind of stand away from the minions so he can't laser you and the minions. There, I did a really bad job. But yeah, he's going to look to laser you and the minions. So you can kind of use that a little bit to play around the laser. Just try to get off the wave. And here we have this freeze. This is like perfect because we get to all in him. But we see Mia and we see this fight bottom. So we ping Mia. We know that Victor's going down there. We keep this freeze so he loses more than we lose. And then we decide to come down here. I'm trying to ping danger because it looks so scary for my team. But we rotate down here. Now this rotate is super good because Victor is losing more than we're losing. So no matter what happens, we're ahead as long as we don't like int. But this guy looks super low. So I'm like, whatever, we'll just stay here. Nice. And we get the double. And Victor's a scaling champion, so he's really bad at these rotations compared to Trindamir. And he moves slower, so perfect. Here, Kane actually stayed, and that made me really angry. Backing here is really good because it kind of matches the tempo. We're on the map at the same time as our bot lane and as our uh, as our opponent. Him staying here made me really angry, and he dies for it. Good. But you can see, when we look back at this wave, we have this beautiful wave built up. And this is because we left when the wave was on a good spot. He's lost so many minions and we get to come back and collect all these minions that have built up for us. So not only did we get the triple kill, but we're also winning the, the wave. Since this is a Masters game, this game is over. There's like nothing else to look at really. Like I'm so far ahead in XP, I'm ahead in kills, I'm ahead in everything you could possibly imagine. Right. Um, and I hit tab and our top lane's struggling a little bit, but Kane's ahead and bot's ahead. And I am super far ahead. And in my head, I'm just like, this game should be over. Now, one thing that's important when you're ahead like this is to not rush. The pressure is on them to make a really crazy play happen. Look at, look at this. Look at this. I'm not rushing. I'm not forcing the all in because I'm ahead. I'm just walking up to him and saying, hey, man, <laughs> I can kill you. And he freaks out about it. He wastes his spells. Boom. We run him down because this Leona makes a very good roam. Perfect. Um, and here he loses a bunch of waves. Like we feel so incredibly strong here. So again, this is kind of like the perfect Trindamir game. We had very good wave management. We punished this Victor very, very well. We had good rotations. Um, this is like what is possible with early game Trindamir. He has so much sustain and so much roam potential that he can really use it to create good situations. And he has good all in, so you can kind of freeze and set up all ins. Now, lane phase is over, but let's see how we kind of transition that into ending through mid and late game. Because again, like I said, I, I overstay a little bit here. But it's because I wanted my item, so it ends up being worth it. And I think ideally, we were able to back a little bit earlier, but it's fine. 
I'm watching bottom because our jungle's on the bot side. You always want to roam to the side your, your jungle's on. So this is my strong side, right? Our jungle's here and our bot's here. Your strong side's where all your teammates are at. So I'm thinking, all right, maybe we're on bottom when we get back. Maybe we do dragon. Maybe they don't need me at all. As you can see, I keep looking bottom. Keep looking bottom with my camera. And here I'm just pushing so I can go bottom. Make sure we get this dragon. You can see I spin bot. This is why teammate awareness is so important. It's so important to know where your teammates are at. Like as a mid laner, you have to know where your jungler is at. You just have to, have to, have to know where your jungler is at. Okay, so here we can see some crazy interaction happening bottom. So I'm just thinking like, I'm thinking about how I can impact that if I can at all. Since they're making a play bottom, I'm just thinking about pushing my wave. So that no matter what their jungler does, they're still losing. Like if the jungler goes bottom, they're still losing mid. If the jungler goes mid, they're still losing bottom. Okay, so Hecarim just grabbed Harold. I think I'm just watching for him. I want to see where this Hecarim's at. Usually you wouldn't do this, but since I'm so far ahead, even if he sees me, I wouldn't die. But if you're even, you would never walk into the like into your weak side with no vision like that. Very common people die for that. Here, again, I'm kind of just buying space for my bottom. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm just perma pushing. This is sad. We know our top side's our weak side, right? Kane has been bottom this whole game. Super sad. In my head, I'm kind of like, that's tough for Gwen. And she actually starts typing because she's a little bit tilted. It sucks, but as long as she can kind of just hold it down for a little bit, the rest of our team is winning super, super hard. So... Now Kane is on the top side. So now you can see my body language changes. Now I'm leaning to the top side. Now I'm looking at our top side a little bit more. And I'm kind of thinking, can I go top? Of course, we want to wait for Gwen to be alive. So I'm not going to move there now. But as long as Kane's up there, top lane is an option for us. Oh, their whole team is here. Okay, Lulu's fun. But yeah, again, the pressure is not on us because we're so far ahead. We're really just chilling. Like we're chilling and we're letting them make the mistakes. We're letting them try to force a play to come back. And I, I described in one of my coachings today, like when you're ahead, you just want to be very surgical with the way you approach it, right? You don't want to force any plays to happen. Just play slow, play patient. They're going to try to force a play. And when they do that, you can punish them for it. But otherwise you just play slow. You handle your waves. You get the dragon when it's up. You get the baron when it's up. Just play very slow and patient. The pressure's not on you when you're ahead. So that's what I'm telling myself right now. I'm just trying to remember that we don't need to do anything crazy. Just keep applying the pressure comfortably, patiently, and they will kind of just get squeezed out of this game. Right? So let's see. How far is the end of this game? We're about 13 minutes into this game. So plates are about to fall off. Again, I see the bot play, our jungle's bottom, so I'm like, okay, maybe I can come help. And I feel like I can get our boy out of here, so I pop ghost. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, I can't get him out. But since I have Bork, I'm able to kill the Hecarim. I flash out of this to not get stunned. If, you're, if I'm in that for like half a second longer, another second, we get stunned. So I flash out to get stunned so I can land the thing. And then I intentionally don't use my E here so I can E away. Beautiful Trindamir execution right there. Now Victor flashes at us and he's trying to run us down. I tried to juke out the laser by moving down, but he cast it in a way where it didn't matter where I moved. I still got hit by it and then E over the wall and we are home free. That felt really, really pretty. That is like a chef's kiss Trindamir play right there. Um, we, we had really good autos. We avoided the enemy spell as well. Trindamir doesn't have a lot of mechanics, which means it, you get to just deal with the fundamental game. So we just dealt with the fundamental game. We landed our auto attacks. We spaced well. We escaped well. We, we moved in clean, in clean ways. Beautiful execution there. Okay, they're just trolling here. 
So I'm pinging them off because I'm like, I do not want to go there. If you ever roam, you really want to make sure you have a good wave state. And my wave's just in the middle here, right? So I don't really want to walk there without dealing with my wave first. So I'm like, just, just be patient, guys. I have no alts. My wave is a little bit doomed. And they just leave and I'm like, good. Here, I'm, I'm kiting, but I'm also autoing to proc my Blade of the Rune King. After three auto attacks with Blade of the Rune King, you steal movement speed. So that's just, I'm, that's what I was thinking about. Especially because he had red buff. Like, that's really scary. Without Bork, he might have been able to run me down. I'm not really sure. But again, the pressure's on them. I have 600 gold on my head. So they're going to try to do everything they can to kill me and get my bounty. So again, the pressure's on them so much more. And we get to just chill. We get to just stand there and let them mess up. And of course, you still apply a little bit of pressure, but a comfortable amount of pressure. We're really not trying to overstep. Like overstepping would be the worst case scenario. Like a lot of people get ahead and they try to do this crazy 1v3 thing. Like, no, just play slow. I wasn't even acknowledging it until uh, Dragon was up and our team's a little bit more together. And they're all resetting. We get the free dragon. I decide since they're all recalling, he doesn't need my help. I go right back to the lane. Super common thing. As a mid laner, like you definitely don't need to help with early dragons. Unless it's like actively being contested. Because if he's just trying to sneak the dragon, us pushing mid is such a better use of our time. As long as he doesn't like need us. So that's good. Uh, this game, I decide I'm going Gale Force because you, you really can't go Kraken right now, I don't think. I think you either go Bork into Sunfire for like DPS and sustain, or you go Bork into Gale Force and you kind of just play like a. You, you play very mobile, right? You just bounce into their back line, you run away, you get a good flank, you rotate to the side lane, you flank back in, that kind of. That kind of very fast paced, very, very mobile play style. I think it's super important. Okay, so now the bot tower is gone and plates are down. So now we really want to start to side lane. So our ADC comes mid. That's a big sign to us as a mid laner that we go to the side lane. And Trindamir especially loves the side lane. So I'm like, great. We really get this nice long lane to all in people on. We get to apply some split pressure. We get to get good flanks into the team fight. Like this. This is awesome for us. This is awesome. And I'm still looking, constantly looking to see if we want to rotate into that. But they are just cleaning house. And this tower is worth so much money. Again, I keep looking. That's, that's like the biggest thing that side laners miss is looking. You always, always, always have to look at this fight to see if it's worth your flank. But since there's two kills worth of gold in this tier two tower, I'm like, screw that. Guaranteed two kills, basically, if we get this tower, I'm going to take it. And then denying camps, super, super good. Plus we have our mythic, so I kind of just want it back. Yeah, I don't even want to step kind of into their unwarded areas or spots that we don't have warded. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to back. I'm going to grab my item. I'm going to check to see kind of what objectives coming up and where I want to go. Here, I'm not too sure where I want to go, but so pushed up, I can't really catch that wave right away. So you can see me hitting tab and kind of seeing, asking myself what lane I want to go to. I decide that I'm going to go top, and at the same time, Gwen decides she's going to go bottom. Beautiful lane assignment stuff here. And I decide I'm just going to go get this wave. I'm going to, to apply tons of top pressure to break the tower super good stuff again this is what i'm talking about we're winning we're not going to try to be crazy and try to end the game mid and a ramp we're going to play very surgical we're going to deny them waves top we're going to get the tower we're going to you know get the vision control we're going to do all these small things to kind of slowly squeeze the life out of them until we win um and if they want to try to make a crazy play perfect we'll let them and then we'll kill them for that but if they're not going to try to make a crazy play we'll just take it We'll just take it. 
we will like either we're gonna squeeze them out and we win or they make a crazy play and we punish them because we're so far ahead and we win the the biggest reason people lose when they're ahead is they try to force too much play slow be patient play surgical okay i see a fight happening which kind of sucks because i'm not close to it i wish i was there i remember kind of kicking myself wishing that i was there but if i could 1v1 olaf I would take it, but he doesn't want to fight me. Here I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I can clean up a little bit. The JS cleanup crew. So my goal is just to Gale Force and walk away. Unfortunately, the Gale Force doesn't kill him. And this tilted me beyond belief. I was so mad. Luckily, I didn't have to ult. Ulting would have been really bad because uh, Baron and Dragon are up pretty quickly here. And we want to make sure that we're, we're prepared to fight there. So using your cooldowns, Ghost, Flash, Alt, maybe even Gale Force isn't worth for that. We probably should have just not done that. Even if we get that kill, like it's it's not that helpful for these objectives. And the objective is how you win. You don't win through just killing their own Owen Fort Victor. This game is also a good example of why champion mastery is so important. This Victor is a master's player. This is a master's game from my main account. Um but the victor just like i don't think he plays his champion and it, it's so obvious in the lane phase i'm so much more active i have so many things so many more things going on and he's just kind of he's struggling to keep up this is what playing a comfort champion versus playing like a champion you're not comfortable with looks like also for the build i decided to go sereldios next because we have a lot of ad damage um our gwen is super far behind so we don't have a lot of ap damage and their olaf is their biggest threat so i'm like olaf and hecarim can build lots of armor and that makes me a lot worse so i'm just gonna go last whisper i'm gonna go sereldias sereldias heals super good with trin's e usually i'd go like novori here um but since we're so like countered by armor i'm gonna get baron perfect this happens a lot where the enemy team's just going to try to trade sides of the map. They know we're on Baron, so they're just going to get anything on this side that they think is valuable. So usually the play is to get this and then try to punish as hard as possible, and we'll get a lot more. It's pretty much exactly what happens. They get Dragon, but we're like, we don't care. <laughs> you got Dragon and an Objective Bounty, but we got all of your towers, and we got Baron. My team, oh, some of my teammates actually go to contest a little bit. This is a little bit troll. They get away with it because they're so far ahead, but like that's genuinely troll. And they steal the dragon. But me and Tristana break all these towers anyways. And at this point, the game's over. We got the dragon, the baron, and both these towers. So this game's over. It lasts a couple more minutes because they actually are able to stop us here, but we just walk it down mid after. So the game's over. Um, this is a really good example of lane assignments, when you swap to the side lane, how you beat Victor, good Trindamir mechanics, good Trinomir build, like all of these things, like this game was a good example of. So I hope you guys appreciated it. Um, Trinomir mid is one of my favorite picks and it's a really good answer to Victor. A lot of my other picks like really struggling to Victor, like Annie, for example. Uh, Victor is one of Annie's worst matchups, I feel like. But Trinomir does really good into it. He's like a textbook counter and this is why. You have so much more impact, you rotate so much more, you play so much quicker and you have all in threat that there's not a lot he can do for you. So. This is like the perfect Trindamir mid game. This is also a good example of why champion mastery is so incredibly important. Champion mastery, like I, I have so many games on Trindamir. I know what my champion does, what my game plan is so intuitively that my, my head is so freed up to look at the rotations. I'm constantly looking at bot lane. I'm constantly looking at top. I'm constantly looking at my jungler and deciding what's worth what. I don't have to worry about my champion. I don't even really have to worry about the lane phase because this matchup is just ingrained into me, right? So I'm constantly just making very high quality decisions because so much of my mental stack is freed up to that. That's what Champion Mastery is all about. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy these commentated guides. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a blessed night. Peace.